BeastNet is brought to you by James Safety Services in partnership with OCR Bunny and OCR Strong. Here we discuss all things OCR and fitness related. Welcome to BeastNet. Hey everybody out there in BeastNet land, you got Brother Boggs, or I guess I'm Sir Boggs now from More Heart Than Scars, checking in today with Nicole Campbell. She's a uh, new to the OCR scene and she's been out there on course with us with more heart than scars and and let's go ahead and say yeah hello Nicole tell us a little bit about yourself uh yeah I'm Nicole um I have a spinal cord injury in my lumbar region I have some neurological issues to go along with it uh I started raising what two three months ago with more arts and scars, um, I'm thankful I did. Uh, it's helped my mental health a lot. Um, it's also gotten me out of my chair more. Um, you know more about that than anybody. You were there my first race. You've been there almost every race I've done, um, except one. <laughs> um, and then, I don't know. I don't like talking about myself, so this is going to be difficult. So yeah, you were you were Miss Wheelchair Georgia there for a little while, I thought. I was. Um, I was crowned Miss Wheelchair Georgia February fourteenth, twenty twenty. Um, due to COVID, however, we did not have a national competition in twenty twenty, so I got to keep my title for twenty twenty one, and I competed in nationals in August of 2021 and did not win. However, I did win the title of Miss Congeniality. There you go. That's awesome. And it was it was awesome to see you get to carry that, that uh, sash for two years. Yeah, you it was exciting. Hang, you don't have it hanging up behind you because you could show off that sash. That thing got trashed. Yeah, it did, because I wore it on course. <laughs> it was exciting yeah. to wear it on course, though. Um, I do have it hanging up with all my Spartan medals and a Phoenix medal and what other? Oh, the Bear Crawl, the two races that you weren't there for. Yep, unfortunately, I can only travel east so much. Um, someday, if the podcast starts making some real money, It'll help me uh, afford more trips out there. But right now, I got to rely on airline miles. Yeah, well, there is some talk about me coming out there later this year to do a race with you. That sounds like a lot of fun. We were talking about uh, Portland, I think it is. Yeah, it is um, Portland. It's be a little cold because it is September, but uh, but the mm -hmm. venue is really nice. It's, uh, it's a motorsports park. Uh, Oh, so you you haven't done a race at a motorsports park yet. Uh, you no. may have seen the pictures when they did it down in Jacksonville and they had that yeah. mud hill. that was just like a quarter mile of just straight uphill barbed wire under mud. Yeah. And that's that's the kind of things that you see at a motor motocross park is they, they have to incorporate the track. OK, well, so the bear crawl. I want to yeah. no, no the Phoenix bear crawl was part of a motor speedway or, yeah. or race the motorcycle race course yep. situation. Um, and I know Wendy likes to make that course very, very technical. A lot of parts where it's single track and real tough. So that's real, real good that you got to get out and do that course because I know Wendy puts on a great, great race out there. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Um, I definitely had my moments out there on that course where I had to trust people I hadn't raced with before. Um, but it was good because my people weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of us, you know, can't travel to every race. Uh, you know, Dale and the other Dale, they're at least down there in the Southeast so they can get to some Yeah, of them. I did have, I did have my one Weedo. Your other Dale? Yeah, my other Dale. Yeah. Um, it was his first time breaking, I think, on, with me. Yeah. Sorry. And it's, it's different with every racer. Um, yeah, I've, I've been on chair for 
four different athletes now, actually. And every athlete has, has different needs, you know, as where, mm -hmm. you know, you need a little more uh, emotional support as well as, yeah. you know, the, the support being in the three wheeled chair that likes to go its own direction all the time and all that stuff. So it's a little bit, my different arm candy. Than, yeah. Then, you know, when I'm with Bess, you know, she's just, she's just there. She's trying to have a fun time and, and easy. And Chloe was just hilarious when I was out with her, she was in that three wheeled chair too. And we had just tons of fun trying to keep her upright because <laughs> it was a single, single track trail where it was just all, mm -hmm. it was that... supposed to be, a, it was supposed to be a 5k. And that's where we came out with the 5k. Um, Cause Jason Phi was the one that designed that and he can't, he can't hit 5k to save his life. It was actually about seven and a half K. Oh my so, gosh. No. And it was almost all single track uh, trail with wheelchairs. But that, that does was, not sound fun. That was an interesting one. You know, it's funny. The person I haven't been on chair much with is Erica. She has a select few people that she likes. Kind of like yeah. I have a select few people I like on my chair. Um, <laughs> that she'll she'll race with and that's pretty much who she races with um, i just I find, I find i'm the jack of all trades i just jump in wherever i'm needed and that's kind of how i ended up on yeah. um i i'm having i had a talk with erica um and to keep it brief i i'm going to have to start trusting people who aren't my people yeah. to be on my chair aka when you're not there, <laughs> um, because you and Dalio, or I don't know if I can say his Spartan name on here, <laughs> but I'll call him my name, Dalio, <laughs> yeah. um, aren't always going to be there. So I've got to find people that I can trust, that I trust like you and him that also can help me in those moments where I panic and have those flashbacks and I need, I need somebody like you and him yep. in those moments, because on course, I, I really don't have anybody except you and him right now. Yep. I, I'll caveat that with right now, because I am still so new to the group, yep. but yeah, it feels like I've been here for years. So it's like walking in and your family's already got their arms out ready to hug you when you walk in the door. Yeah. And also that is very new for me. I mean, cause I come from a family who doesn't show love and affection in that sense. And so after my first race, I literally had to take like a few days, almost a week to like decompress from all the affection and all the love, like outpouring of love that I got from more hearts and scars because I, it was new for me and, but it was great. I don't get me wrong. Like, it's great to be around people that are so positive and outpouring of love because I didn't know I needed it, but I did. I didn't realize how depressed I had gotten. Um, and to know that like, just by me doing a Spartan race that I, had wanted to do since before my accident. Cause I mean, I had signed up for a Spartan race and then I got into my accident. And so I never actually got to do my official first Spartan race. I missed it. Not until we drug you out on course in, in Georgia. Twice, yep. may I add, twice. And everyone no. thought I wasn't gonna go out the second time. It's very common for a first time <laughs> athlete to go out and do one and be like, all right, that was enough. I'm done for the day. But, and then uh, I like slept in my chair. <laughs> and then for the second day you came out and you actually, you had more of a race the second day because, you know, you wanted to do the, the barbed wire crawl on your own. You didn't want all the help. And Yeah. And Cause picture. I didn't know what to expect the first day. Yep. And you could just see it, the pictures of you digging in your claws, just dragging <laughs> yourself along. Cause that was before you, before you got your legs working a little bit better too. Yeah, and that was that was after the weeks and months of physical therapy. Yeah. And 
because I once I went after went out there on that course after those first two races, I knew what I was doing. I knew what to expect on course. So I went back to my physical therapist and I was like, I want to do X, Y, and Z. And he looked at me, he goes, it's going to be rough, but if anybody can do it, it's you. And I was like, okay. And I, I put into, I put in the work and by the next race, I, I did it. I put in the work. (laughs) I was up on my forearm crutches walking at least half a mile, a mile. I was going to say, I know on the sprint, you probably did over half the race on your crutches. Yeah. Because that but it race- wasn't like straight in a row, but it was like, I walk a little bit and then I sat and, and had, I had to take breaks. Yep. Um, it wasn't just straight in a row. Like I'm walking this half a mile or this mile. Um, I definitely had to take breaks, like short spurts because like right now my body can't do that. But one day, my goal, December, (laughs) the Central Florida one, come Central Florida, that sprint and I are going to be best friends. Yep, we just, uh, we need to get you back mobile on your shoulder again since it's uh, out of touch. I definitely injured that, that I don't know how I got micro tears in it, but I did. I would guess it's something to do with climbing the giant mud wall on the cargo net. There was a lot of pressure on your shoulders helping you up that. Yeah, I'm going to guess that Atlanta race when we were all learning how to help me with my disabilities and I was learning to work with you guys. There was. I know, even on the crawl, when we're doing the, the first crawl the first day, we're putting way too much pull on your shoulders, not enough letting you do it yeah and I'm not like honestly I'm not mad at anybody uh because obviously I still have to use it daily um my doctors aren't even they're just like just don't overuse it and I'm like how do I not overuse the shoulder I'm a wheelchair user and he laughed at me honestly he's just like you know what I mean like don't don't go out racing me right now and I was just like what (laughs) cut down on crossfit yeah that too he was like i know you do crossfit three days a week just cut back to like maybe once every two weeks and i was like that is not okay (laughs) at least this time i might be able to beat you in a apple competition (laughs) that is true (laughs) Because I won't be able to do anything for seven weeks, seven days. Yep. But, I mean, uh, right now I can't even get my shoulder, my arm above my head. That's not good. No, it's really not. Because on top of, so the muscles uh, that go from like here up into your neck, I don't know what it's called. Yeah. But I have micro tears in it. And then I have micro tears in my rotary cuff. really overworked it yeah so eight weeks it's a good thing you didn't have any big races planned in the next few weeks right i have Asheville, but that's still nine weeks away that's my cutoff too yeah so that means you got to get out and uh well the minute they let you start start exercising again so you can be ready for Asheville. yeah (laughs) Once I'm free, I'm going I'm straight to the gym. <laughs> you'll, you'll see my little apple no, thing. Just, yeah. <laughs> you'll get those alerts for sure. Yep. You're like, well, she's been released. <laughs> no, that'll be fun. Then I'll have to jump in and try to beat you again. But unfortunately, you seem to, to outdo me every day when we're exercising, so. Yeah, I hey, when I commit to something, I commit. Yeah. And that's that's definitely been the thing. It's been amazing just in the, the eight weeks, nine weeks that I've known you, watching you go from wheelchair bound and very timid 
to a lot more outgoing and up on your crutches. I mean, that was, I didn't expect you to be on your, your arm crutches when we went out for the second race together. And that was just so amazing to see. Yeah. So I, I told Joey that I was going to do it and, um, and that I had, that I wasn't even going to tell you about it. I was just going to do it and surprise you. And he goes, he's going to love it. (laughs) Yep. Because I've been keeping a secret from you the whole time. Yeah. We, uh, anything we can do to help empower and enable our athletes is just amazing. And then when they do something like that, where they go out on their own and, and come back with a surprise, that's just, that was just amazing to see. I was so proud of you. But yeah, no. I, I, I did, I worked super hard to get to that point. Um, and now that like I'm out of physical therapy because I got to that point and now my physical therapist is like, come back in August. I want to see how far you've come. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. Um, I mean, I, I'm still not like get up and just like walk away. I have to either use my wheelchair or forearm crutches. Um, but I, I hope one day to be like that. And, but I also know the reality of my spinal cord injury is I may never, I may always have a mobility aid. May it be a cane or a forearm crutch or a wheelchair, depending on the distance I'm walking. Um, and that's my reality. Somebody who has the same injury as me at the same level as me or a different level, their reality is different. Um, everyone who has a spinal cord injury has a different reality. It's not, it's it's not cookie cutter. Um, and that is something I wish people would realize because I get the comments of my daughter has X, Y, and Z their spinal cord injury and they do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, well, that's, that's good for them, but mine is different. My nerves are different. I mean, I can, I can move my thigh, but my ankles and toes don't, I mean, my toes will wiggle, but I can't tell you how I do it or what's going on. Like, I just know I can move my thigh. Like I can't feel anything. (laughs) I just, if I think about moving my knee, my thigh moves. If I think about moving my thigh, my knee moves. That's that's how I do it. That's the mystery of how I get things. Like that's the mystery of how I do it. Um, it's so and the best. Every, at, like like you said, every single injury is different. The way that your nerves rewired themselves. Because that's really what happens when you have a, yeah. a spinal cord injury. Your body tries to find a way to work around it. Mm-hmm. And in some cases, it, it does better. In some cases, it does worse. You know, yeah. in, your, in your case, you can't feel thigh down, but magically your nerves have made enough connection to, to control some pieces. Yeah. And I mean, and I think my recovery this time, and I, I want to preface this is my injury happened in 2012 and I was up walking before, you know, before. And then I ended up having a medical condition, AKA cancer that put me back. It set me back because I got super sick. Stage four cancer will do that to you. It happens. Um, And then now I'm back trying to, get back on my feet. Um, And I think that's what's helping me progress so fast is my brain already knows what it's supposed to do. It's just trying to remap that again Um, and trying to rebuild those muscles again. And, but like, I haven't done it since, oh gosh, 2015. Yep. So I've been turned, I've been in my chair using that medical aid since 2015, um, which, you know, it happens. A lot of people who are in my situation, 
they have setbacks and then they either have the mindset of I'm going to progress or they have the mindset that I got into for a little bit of this is my lot in life. Um, and I'm just going to deal with it. This is just how I'm going to live life. Um, and I'm granted back in 2015 from 2015 to 2019, I was depressed. I mean, I went through a, I went through a lot of growing up. I went through a lot of living. Um, my, my, my bubbliness was gone. Yep. <laughs> I, I guess you could say that. Um, sometimes for a little bit, it was taken from me um, by an individual that isn't in my life anymore. Um, and that's a good thing. <laughs> um, and from 2019 till now, I've found myself again. And that's, that's why I, st- I found a way. That's why I contacted Joey in the beginning. That's why I contacted more hearts and scars is because I wanted to get back into races. Um, cause I raced before I, um, I did five K's, 10 K's, um, tough mutters. I'd signed up, like I said, I signed up for my first, first Spartan race right before I had my accident. And so, I mean, full circle here, <laughs> um, yep. then to now I'm getting back to meet the me that doesn't have strings. I don't have influence from somebody on the outside telling me I can't or cannot do something because it doesn't fit their narrative. Yep. And that's what I love um, about life right now, <laughs> I guess you could say. Yep. Well, and, and part of helping you break from other people and, and the strings of the past and everything, um, we've talked about we need to help you get mobile again. Yeah. Uh, right now you're sharing a van with your roommate and and you don't have a way to get around yourself without relying on other people. Mm-hmm. So we started a GoFundMe. Yes. And the plan is to use that GoFundMe to get you a vehicle and get it outfitted for hand controls. I assume. Yes. And uh, make it yours so that you don't have to rely on somebody to get you to and from appointments and to get you independent. The first stage is of becoming an independent again. Yeah. And uh, so that's part of the reason, now well, most of the reason why we're talking today is because this episode is going to be the lead in where I'm going to start a campaign to try to, to help BeastNet uh, get you there. Um, BeastNet is is of course the podcast we're listening to, but uh, you know, myself and and the podcast, we're really a part of More Heart Than Scars. If you look at the development from where we started and when Mike and I started really getting involved, More Heart Than Scars is what, what was exactly what we had tried to do with the podcast. So getting out and doing this now for you, um, this is just the next step in our evolution. We want to help the athletes any way they can and and we want to get you mobile so that you can get on to the next step forward in your independence and so i'm really really looking forward to helping quarterback that and get this going with this episode yeah that'd be amazing part of that is is i I sent you over some logos and i wanted you to, to come up with your own design um anybody who donates and sends me a receipt of donation they're going to be getting a one of a kind for this uh, one fundraiser only sticker. And if they make large contributions, I'll have other uh, items that we'll be sending out from BeastNet. But the plan is hopefully in the next two to three weeks to get you funded so we can get you mobile and get around town. And, that would be uh, epic. Last time we tried this, we were able to do it pretty quickly for someone. So we just need, to, we're gonna do a full court press. I'm gonna get, Everybody from More Heart Than Scars on board was sharing it, and, uh, and we're going to go nuts. Um, I've got one friend who's going to probably help design a bunch of 
stuff to help spread it on Insta also. Um, and I know you've, you're working on becoming a social media influencer yourself. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> and uh, so you're going to get out there and share it. And then we'll probably try to get uh, Kate, the gal with one leg, maybe share it with her 100,000 TikTok followers or whatever it is that she's got. Uh, I was talking with her. It's something crazy like that that she's got for followers. <laughs> yeah. One of the goals, like, because being at OCR races or obstacle course races for people on my side of the world, because <laughs> um, I know everyone that follows BeastNet knows what OCR means. Um, I know the people that I will share this podcast with probably doesn't know what OCR means. Uh, it's obstacle course racing. Um, being at those brings me joy. Even if I'm not racing, it's something about the people. And having a vehicle that allows me just to get to a race, because I know that not every time I will have a ride. So there will be races I'll have to miss. Like, like I said, the next eight weeks, I can't race, but there's races going on. Um, just to be able to find a ride out to those races and hang out with the, the More Hearts and Scars family would be amazing for me. So depression doesn't start set in, you know what I mean? Cause I, those are races that I would love to have tended and participated in. However, I can't now because of my shoulder. So now I'm like trying to stay out of a depression state, um, which honestly <laughs> has been very difficult for me, but I am trying my hardest. I have, I'm drawing, obviously yep. that logo has been definitely keeping my attention. Um, I just finished a Mandalorian helmet too. Uh, um, so you, show, you showed me a picture of that one had the X-wing in the. In it. I. It didn't have. It actually had the Mandalorian's new ship in it. Oh okay. The rebuild of Anakin's ship. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It, oh uh, yeah. That's right. That was the uh, uh, Alderaan fighter ship. Yeah. I the name of it. Yeah. It had that in it in the visor. Yeah. The reflection of it. Yeah. Um, so drawing has definitely been my thing right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, to help with the depression since I can't leave the house um, without even without my friend's help or paying for a lift, which they raised their prices because of gas. So I can't afford it right now. Um, yeah, they, they raised their prices 10%, but you still get the same amount every month. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is true. Yep. Um, well, so that's, yeah. that's part of getting you independent again, because if you're independent and, and able to get around, you maybe be able to get back into the workforce, find something that fits your needs. Yeah. Um, I have been looking, thinking about that too. Cause like there's, I mean, I still get job things sent to me because indeed does that. Um, yep. I still have my indeed, um, what resume out there and yeah, my resume out there. Um, and it's like that job would be great, except I have no way of getting to it. Yep. Um, and it's like some of these are like dream jobs for me, but it's like I can't get down to Atlanta to do this job because I don't have a vehicle or a reliable vehicle at that. Well, when so. you're sharing a vehicle, it's hard to, to schedule your life around each other, and, mm -hmm. and not to mention it's a, a creeper panel van, but. <laughs> oh my gosh yes I it's so scary to drive too like I I am so terrified I had to drive it uh, actually downtown Atlanta this past weekend I I about cried from a panic attack driving it Atlanta is a great city there's not a single road that goes parallel they're all just wonky donk all throughout downtown yeah. And there's about four peach trees 
and my GPS said take Peachtree, and I was like, which one? On the corner of four peach trees. Yeah. yeah. I, I was just kind of like, is it? I had had to figure out where I was to figure out which peach tree, and I was like, oh, that's the Dragon Con Hotel. Okay, I know where I'm at. I take this one. And that was for a convention, right? You yeah. <laughs> I was working a convention. Looked well, like I was volunteering fun. my time to work with a friend who has a, a, a LAN place. Um, he, he actually works with disabled people. Yeah. Um, he has a eSports e center. Okay. Down by the Brave Stadium, he does adaptive esports, um, computer gaming. That'd be fun. Yeah, it's it's amazing. Uh, I helped him out with it this weekend, and the equipment is so cool. Yeah. So. Well, that's cool. Maybe we have to get him on and talk about adaptive e games. Yeah. I. Totally. I'll give you his contact information <laughs> later. <laughs> That'll be fun. And now a word from our sponsors. Does your business need first aid, AED, OSHA, flagging, or other safety training? James Safety Services is your one-stop shop. Find them on Facebook today at James Safety Services WA and ask for a quote on hosting your training needs. And we're back. Aside from... Uh the upcoming races that we've kind of talked about and the upcoming GoFundMe. What else is going on in Nicole's life that, uh, that you want to tell listeners about or anything? What else is going on? Well, uh, I mean, I, I work with a service dog organization yeah. um, called Steadfast Service Dogs. That's where um, if they follow me on social media, they'll see my white German shepherd or if they see me in person, they know I have this gorgeous white German shepherd. Um, that's where she came from. Um, I, I do a lot of work with them. Yeah. Um, what else is going on in my life? I, I basically have been working on myself, um, <laughs> making sure I'm, doing, taking the steps to better my life, um, to become more independent and to, for when I do get a vehicle, I'm able to afford <laughs> everything for it, like tagging it, making sure it's yes, mine. Affairs. Yeah. Um, because like I, I'm on a strict income, which means I can only have so much in my account at a yeah. time. Um, so I'm, I have to make sure my budget is set. Yeah. And so it's like my life is a bubble when it comes to certain things. And between paying my bills and trying to save for a vehicle, it has been very <laughs> strict living. Well, and you also, you had to just pay for a wheelchair too. Yes, I did, which I pick up on Friday. Friday, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. Awesome, because A, that'll give me some independence because it has a smart drive with it, which means I won't have to use my shoulder as much. <laughs> I mean, I can not really go out anywhere except like outside my yard <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but like I can still like it when I do go out to like Walmart or grocery shopping I don't have to like be in pain yeah. getting food because like right now just getting around my house I'm in excruciating pain from my shoulder um and so like, it's nice to know that like, I have doctors looking out for me for the first time in 10 years. Yep. Um, shout out to the Shepherd Center, like, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's nice. 
the and I want to thank the people who did donate to help me get that chair payment done because there were a few people who helped who donated to help get that chair paid for, for my new chair paid for and they deserve the biggest thank you ever it's amazing how expensive chairs and and everything is uh, mm -hmm. you know just a basic custom fit chair is three four thousand dollars yes for a good one and then you get into one like yours with the smart assist that's going to be six thousand more <laughs> yeah um so the smart drive alone is about six thousand dollars yeah um my chair was like 20 something and then plus my out-of-pocket expenses because the insurance decided it wasn't important that i have natural fit push rims even though my fingers like dislocate and get stuck between the tire and the the rail that you hold on to push yeah so i have my thumbs would like to get stuck between there because yeah. there's they're Pop so out. wide and my thumbs are tiny yeah. so they would just slide in there and get stuck and then i'm like well there goes my entire arm and thumb <laughs> um and insurance decided that that four hundred dollars or it was like 320 or something like that something was not they wouldn't budge. yeah they wouldn't budge on it and i was like you would pay for everything else that I needed except that one thing. That's crazy. And I even, there were some things I needed that I didn't get because we knew insurance wouldn't pay for it. Yeah. And, and I knew I couldn't afford it yep. for my chair. And I'm like, that, because that's just how disabled people are we when we get chairs we we have to think about these things when we were talking with our advisors for chairs we have to go well well do you, do you know if insurance will pay for this and they're they they're honest with us and they're like no so we just do without it even though medically we need it yep. insurance will still say no even though insurance doesn't live our life they they don't live with our medical conditions. They're not our doctors. They're not our nurses. They don't have our medical conditions. They're just insurance people who read a piece of paper and say, no, we don't want to pay for, a buck for the company. Yes. And it's like, well, I guess I'll be in pain or I'll figure something else out. Um, and it really shouldn't be that way. Insurance companies, unfortunately, have a lot of pull and they shouldn't have as much. It should be, this is what the doctor says you need and this is what you get. Yeah, and I know there's, and I, a lot of, there's a lot of people that have been advocating for that. And that's, mm -hmm. hopefully it'll get somewhere because you know people with, with different disabilities or different abilities that need that kind of support, you know, the, mm -hmm. the medical industry just needs to get it taken care of. It shouldn't be as much of a fight as it is or choosing, you know, I can live with this much pain versus that much, you know, it should just be, this is what it takes. This is what I need. And this is what you should get. Yeah. I mean, if like, I pay so much money just to survive, yep. like I have to pay money to see, cause I wear glasses. I have to yep. pay money to hear because I'm deaf um like today oh, yeah, you, like, forgot, you forgot to say that at the beginning that you're also deaf <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and so it's like and i have to pay money to get around because i'm just i have a spinal cord injury and like today like back to the deafness like today i had to go pick up some medicine from the pharmacy and i I was having a bad hearing day. Like basically when I have a bad hearing day, the world is loud with my hearing aids in um, and it gives me anxiety. 
So I just don't wear them. And so I went to the pharmacist and I was, they had mask on and I respectfully said, hi, I'm deaf. I read lips. Could you pull down your mask? And the lady checking me out, she knew me. She knows that I'm deaf and she always lowers her mask and talks to me because she knows. And then because it was new medicine, the pharmacist had to talk to me, even though like I had taken the medicine before it was just a new prescription. So had to, had to go through the steps. He wouldn't pull down his mask. He just looked at me like, you don't look deaf. You don't sound deaf. (laughs) And I'm like, bro, I know that look you're giving me. I get it all the time. And so, cause he just kept talking and I'm like, I can see your jaw moving. I have no idea what you're saying, but I can see the jaw move. Yep. Like I'm not dumb. I'm deaf. Like let's, let's end the stereotype. A lot of deaf people don't sound like your typical deaf person that is mm-hmm. portrayed in motion pictures and whatnot. Yeah, um, and and then there, but there are some that do. Yeah. Um, and there are some deaf people who don't speak because of they they didn't take physical therapy to speak, or they just don't know how to regulate their voice. Um, one of my favorite movies is Coda. I wish everybody would go watch it. Um, It is a great representation of the deaf community. Um, It has won awards. I don't don't know. I love it (laughs) because it's, it's my community and it speaks volumes. Yeah. It really does. Even though it's about a coda, a child of deaf parents or deaf adults, yeah. it's still my it's still my community, and it's still I can I can relate. Even though I lost my hearing when I was twenty five, I grew up with hearing loss. I mean, I had meningitis twice, which kind of kicked off me losing my hearing um so it happens (laughs) even though it shouldn't and and your pharmacist just didn't understand the fact that somebody like you or some of the other people that lose hearing later in life that you can speak fairly normally even without your hearing aids in because you learned to talk when you could still hear and your muscle memory is still there yeah Versus um, and I did a, who was born deaf, where they had to do it through physical therapy. And that's that's the people that sound a little more like what you hear on TV. There's the mm-hmm. ones who were born deaf because they, they never had the ability to hear to mimic what other people were doing and get that muscle memory. Yeah. And also, if you're around me when I'm extremely tired, you'll catch me. You'll catch my tones changing because. I'm not concentrating on how I'm speaking or concentrating on my volume or things like that. For me to speak is a lot of concentration on what my voice is doing. And I, I, and so that's when there's sometimes I just want to turn my voice off and talk in sign language, but I'm not around enough people who sign. Um, and so that's when my best friend, Corey, decided to learn sign language. It made my heart melt <laughs> because there are days that I just want to turn my voice off and because it makes my brain like hurt. A lot Not of enough. Do what? It's a lot of concentration to, to control all those muscles and keep everything else going. And it, it, probably, is. it hurts your head sometimes. It is. It's a very, I wouldn't say it gives me migraines, but it does. (laughs) So, but yeah, it definitely melted my heart when my best friend decided to learn sign language and help me out. And then when Jen, uh, 
from up north. More heart than down. scars. Yeah. Yeah, more heart than scars, Jen. When she was at Fayetteville with us and she started signing. Did you notice that? Yep. She specifically went home and learned some basic sign language so she could communicate with you on yeah. the obstacles. Yes. And I loved it. And I, I was so thankful for her because there was moments that I was, and she goes, and then she was like, your communication has gotten better. And I was like, I had to because yeah. no one knew sign language. Cause I didn't know she was going to go home and learn. <laughs> so that, that was very heartwarming for me. Atlanta, I believe was her first race with more hearts and scars. And she got to do it on chair with you and I, mm -hmm. and I think that was, you know, the minute she, she got on chair with us, she was sold on more hearts and scars for life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's amazing when you get out there with, with the group and you know, even with a brand new athlete like yourself, you know, and just get out there and do it. How, like you said, the love in the air, just the pure emotion out there and, and thousands of people going by cheering us on because they know that we're, we're out there with scars, whether they're physical, mental, mm -hmm. visible or invisible, you know, we're all out there with those scars in that group. And that's why it's so important that, that uh, we continue to share that message and, and everyone just, mm -hmm. First time I went out with them, I was even before I went out with them, and I just talked with Zach on the phone. I was like, "Yep, this is for me. I'm in." And uh, and ever since, a chance I get, I'm talking about them. I'm at lunch today. I'm talking to a new store manager, and and I'm talking with her. I'm like, "So, what do you do for fun? You know, what do you do outside of work?" And she tells me a little bit. And I was like, "Well, let me show you what I do." And I flip open my iPad and I start showing her. And she's like, looking at it, and it's like, "Yeah," and. and here it is she was crawling she couldn't even walk and here it is the next time that we go out and she's out here on wheelchair or on arm crutches and just talking about you know the team and talking about you you know you're at atlanta i asked you when was the last time you walked that far and it was a couple hundred yards and you're like it's probably been 10 years yeah. and then we get we get home from atlanta and i'm watching Facebook and here you are at physical therapy using hand crutches or forearm crutches. I like, told well, you. Now she's walking. What the hell? <laughs> I told you I put in the work. Exactly. And that's been awesome to see. And uh, you know, I can't wait to get you in your own car so you can get out there and see us all at the races, even if you're not racing. Uh, yeah. Hopefully I can get uh, things going on the beast net to where there's, it's a profitable show again, instead of, just costing me money. And man, I think I've got somebody that's going to help me with my social media on that here soon. That's good. I think I'm looking at her, but. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. What? <laughs> Somebody's got to help me with social media because I'm no good at it. Hey, I started that. Um, okay. So I have my personal um, Instagram, right? Yep. Um, it's Wills 404 because I, I love coding and anybody who's into it, they know 40401 is the error code that you get for any time a website doesn't pull up. So I put, I made Wills 40401 as my Instagram handle. I love it. It's also my flight number for 501st because I'm a Thai pilot. Because, you know, Tide Pellers are supposed to fly. I made it off the Death Star. I just didn't make it safely. I crash landed. Spinal cord injury. That's my story. Sticking to it. There you go. <laughs> um, anyways, then I started the OCR Adaptive Athlete. Um, because I couldn't find any handle to tag when I posted my photos. Yep. of OCR adaptive athletes and I was like this needs to be a thing so I started it and I started posting photos of adaptive athletes at obstacle course races and it's picked up it's started like wildfire yeah and I don't know what's happened but it's happening <laughs> and I'm 
like a part of me is happy because there's a community out there for it. There's people who need that and they want that. And I found a need for people and I want them to know that like, I'm, I'm happy, um, that it's picking up and it's taking off. Um, and, but also like, I have no idea what I'm doing. It's just fun for me to post about others that love OCR just as much as I do. Yep. Um, but like, I, that's all I do. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, we think to bring a little bit of face to the to the group because there's a ton of adaptive athletes out there with almost no representation. And and it sounds like talking with Andy Reed, who runs the Facebook uh, adaptive athletes page, that there's a huge need in in other countries that that there's still a huge stigma for people in wheelchairs or using arm crutches or anything. And, you know, the U.S., we've been very, very open to it. But I guess worldwide, there's a, a huge so, stigma. As a wheelchair user, forum crutch user myself, who's just been in the world of disabilities and someone who travels a lot. Um, backstory, I used to work for a major airline. Um, so I used to travel a lot. And someone who has been was born with a disability and now is really big into laws <laughs> um oh squirrel moment i'm also working on a bill for the state of georgia because yeah. people deserve rights and they're not getting them um yeah because it's fun and i think people deserve to have rights <laughs> i don't know i know people probably won't see my face in that one but <laughs> yeah but yeah i mean but yeah back to the traveling thing now that i'm traveling as a wheelchair user there actually there is a need um in other countries yeah he is right um they, they lack the accessibility that we have here. Now, don't get me wrong. We have the laws, like we have the ADA, we have all of that, but it's so outdated. It is 31 years outdated. It needs to be looked at. It needs to be reworked, not in a everything's wrong and it, it needs, but it needs to be looked at and seen how it can be updated to meet today's times. Yep. Um, I live in a city where the curb cutouts haven't been updated because it's historic. We can't touch it. Um, you can touch it if a truck crumbles it and now, and then you redo the road and it's unsafe for me to cross the road here. Yep. You you can fix this. Or you can, if you break the storefront and make the historical building not a historical building anymore, therefore you have to make the historical building storefront that's no longer historical, ADA compliant. Meaning put a ramp there. You yep. can't not put a ramp in in front of your store you can't keep it a step if you break storefront and that's what my city is getting away with they're not complying so <laughs> it's things like that that need to be reworked um yep. and looked at and in all over the the states all over the the world needs something compliant like some kind of compliancy like i don't know how they are going to do it but i know there's a global board somewhere that does like they look at things but 
there needs to be some each Back country up. each country needs to not put people with disabilities as a second class yeah and as much as people say we're not second class citizens we are we're always an afterthought every building that is built we're an afterthought yep. um if they would put us as a forethought every building would be accessible to everybody um so it's just things like that um other countries they now there are some countries that have it together um but there are some countries that don't and off the top of my head i can't think of who does and who doesn't but i've seen photos in andy's group and i'm like i want to share their story on instagram but like at the same time it's like how do i get a hold of them you do like i did i just start following people and sending random inquiries that's that's, that's how i found that <laughs> Um, I, was just, I was just looking for my next story and I stumbled across Zach and then I Googled him and watched his TED talk and watched his Saudi talk, listened to a couple of podcasts. And I was like, you know what? I need to get a hold of this guy. And yeah. that's, that's how it all started with me and more heart was, was just doing story research. And then I found Zach and it changed my life. That'll work. That'll do. Um, Something I haven't noticed that other countries do that we don't do is Spartan Para. So we had three years ago the Spartan Para Championships in Laughlin, Nevada. Mm. And then COVID hit and we haven't had another Spartan Para event since. Um, put a bug in Joey's ear to say something to Dan and see if we can see if they're bringing it back. But that, okay. was, that was the original plan was to have uh, a championships for the para every year and to have some events where, where it'd be more centric around the, the adaptive athletes. Uh, like I said, the year before COVID, it's 2019, that was when they had it in Laughlin. And it was uh, for athletes who were, were either on their own or with minor amounts of, uh, of helpers. And there's different classes of, of different racers, but that was a real neat event the one time they had it. Yeah, because I think that would be cool. Um, and, and I think there'd be a, a lot of athletes that would do it. Yeah, I mean, the more time I've spent on course, especially in the Southeast, I've seen so many more you know, blade runners or chair athletes or, you know, my favorite is, is of course, Casey out of Portland. I've told you about him. He's Yeah, I want to meet him. Hips. Well, if you get up to Portland, I'm pretty sure you're going to meet him. I haven't been able to drag him out to the East Coast yet, but, uh, but yeah, he's Hey, a, I get a vehicle, I'll drive. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. So we need to raise those funds so you have a vehicle. Yeah, I'll road trip out there. There you go. Um, kind of hit the one hour mark. So let's, let's kind of wrap things up All right. again. Um, <laughs> is there anything out there you'd like to say to the listeners, uh, words of wisdom, words of hope? Hmm. I'm always so witty on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, oh no. <laughs> well, and I'm good at putting people on the spot, so. If you find something witty, just shoot it to me and I'll put a quote at the end if you want. No, I mean, oh, you I, got something? there's my brain just had something and now it's gone. That That's how I work. I think of something Squirrel. Else, literally. Um, <laughs> so, but no, I think people should not let their fears dictate what's in front of them because if i would have let my fears dictate what was in front of me i wouldn't be sitting here twiddling my hair talking to you about ocr racing being 
having my driver's license back because that was an ordeal. My fears would have kept me back from that. So don't let your fears dictate what you do. Don't let your demons in your head dictate. Um, become their friends because if you become their friends, you know their weaknesses. And if you know their weaknesses, you can win. Do you like the beast net? Do you want to keep hearing it? Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more at beastnet pod. Thanks for listening to the beast net podcast. If you haven't done it yet, find us on Facebook, like, and share the podcast. Give us a review on iTunes or Spotify. All these things will help to expand the show in the future. Don't forget to subscribe and let us know what you think and what you'd like to hear. Yeah.